When I was growing up, there was a show called Fact or Faked that took various people specialized in different skills and challenged them to recreate paranormal videos. In one particular episode, I remember seeing this man. His name is Dr. Jonathan Reed, or so we came to believe, and his story revolves around an alien encounter he had in the forest. The videos he took were shocking, if not for the actual footage of the supposed alien, then definitely for Reed's panicked reaction. After seeing the video pop up on my TikTok feed recently, I wanted to do a deep dive into what exactly happened to Jonathan Reed and show you the bizarre videos he took during his encounter with the beyond. But first, a message from our today's sponsor. <laughs> Creepy Crate is a bi-monthly mystery box that costs $39.99 with free shipping and has an average retail value of $90. That price is even cheaper if you use the code SINISTER5 at the checkout for $5 off of your first purchase. Ooh. This is my first time seeing it, obviously. Don't, don't film, like, I'm wearing sweatpants. Don't film, like... So each, each box comes with, um, like, a little uh, decoder. Um, and on the decoder pretty much tells you everything that um, is in the box. So this is um, the Devil's Kettle uh, High School Pennant. Each Creepy Crate comes with a book. And today's book is, today's book is a thick one, Black Widows uh, by Kate Quinn. Okay, I'm excited, you're gonna be excited. Me? Yeah. <gasps> Is there something corpse bread related? Oh, is that a Coraline pin? pin? This is an audition, is it? Let me see. <gasps> show oh the, my God. Show the camera. This is actually, this is really cool. What is it? Um, there's a really um, fucked up horror movie. Uh, I don't know if it's Korean or Japanese. Um, it's it's audition. I actually, actually show Taylor. This is really cool. I like this. We have a glass. Oh my God. This is um, the family from the movie Ready or Not. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. So this, yeah, this is the Lonely Widows Club wax sealer. If you're you're noticing, each box has a theme. If you're noticing uh, the theme. Oh, and then also included in this, I almost forgot. Um, there is a QR code for an ebook called My Husband's Trying to Kill Me uh, by Jim Shoots, which I am actually probably not going to use personally, but if one of you guys wants to use it, um, whoever gets there first. Cool. Thank you so much to Creepy Crate again for sponsoring the video and uh, shipping me this package. Um, really appreciate it and um, yeah, much love to you. In Seattle, Washington, 1996, Jonathan Reed was in the woods with his dog Susie. During their walk together, the dog ran off deeper into the woods, almost as if she were chasing after something. Reed then heard Susie cry out in pain. Fearing the worst, Reed ran in the direction of the cry and was shocked by what he saw. Standing before him was an alien being noted to be about the size of a small child. Latched onto its arm with gritted teeth was Susie. It was at this point where the alien hooked both of its hands on either side of the dog's jaw and ripped Susie in half before she seemingly turned to white ash. Enraged by this, Reed used a nearby tree branch to knock the alien unconscious. Here is the footage that Reed took after this event, and the footage that most people have seen. Focus. Oh. 
Following his encounter with the being, Reed ran into the creature's craft further into the woods. This following clip, while the tape is very distorted, shows what appears to be a black, triangular ship hovering some odd feet off of the ground. Oh, come on! Come on! Work! <laughs> Unsure of what to do following the conflict, Reed decided to take the alien body back to his home and store it in the freezer in his garage. Now coming down from the adrenaline of the situation, Reed's curiosity got the better of him, prompting him to do an up-close analysis of the creature. This was documented as well. Here's the clip. After the events seen in the video, Reed decided to reach out to a fellow professor at the university where he was employed at at the time. The professor was someone who Reed respected, someone who would have medical knowledge far more advanced than Reed's. After selecting a date with the professor, all Reed had to do was wait. During this time, he kept the body of the alien stored in the garage in his freezer. 
Not too long afterwards, Reed would receive a voicemail from the professor, telling him that he would be unable to attend the inspection. Feeling desperate at this point, Reed would reach out to a neighbor whom he trusted. The neighbor came out to Reed's home, and upon opening the freezer door, the two men were surprised and frightened to see the now conscious being inside. It turned and looked at them before letting out a scream that Reed describes as a vibration in the chest, a sort of burst of energy that pushed him backwards. Despite this, the being was unable to maneuver its way out of the freezer, as its wound was still inhibiting its full motor functions. The two men would decide against moving forward with the examination. We ran for the house, both of us ran for the house, and we sat and, and literally in, and literally in silence for, I don't know, 15 minutes before he just started babbling, saying, you know, oh my God, it's alive, it's alive. It, I think we were just supporting each other's shock and hoping maybe it would run away. But it didn't, it stayed. It stayed in the freezer. And, and hours later, I went back out. I went back out timidly and, and kind of brushed against the side of the freezer to see if I could hear it moving or, or if it was, I mean, you know, it was like an animal trapped in a box that had a big wound in its head that I inflicted, and I figured it's going to kill me. Reed would do his best to return to his day-to-day -day life. According to his testimony, he was coming back from his job at the university one day, and parked outside of his home was a number of nondescript vans with government license plates. They would soon pull away before Reed had time to question them. When he went into the garage to check the freezer, the alien being was gone. Reed believes that the government took the body, as well as is responsible for silencing all those who intended on viewing the body. He claims that the government kills and threatens death to those who are on the verge of discovering things that they shouldn't. In his book titled Link, An Extraterrestrial Odyssey, Reed discusses the story in more graphic novella detail. If I'm being honest, I have not read the book, but I have read the pages listed in the free preview. The preview mainly went over all of the information that we have already established in this video. Since going public about his experience, Reed has received backlash from not only the community around him, but the UFO community as well. In a 2010 episode of the series Fact or Faked Paranormal Files, the Fact or Faked team was able to duplicate the entire Reed video nearly shot to shot. Since this did not entirely eliminate the authenticity of Reed's original footage, however, the team decided to do a voice stress test on Reed himself. Again, I appreciate your being extremely honest and open, and that's all I ask. It's just a frank, honest discussion here. As many people have said, if true, it could be the biggest thing since the Roswell New Mexico crash in 47. Or it could be the greatest, you know, fraud of all time. Mm -hmm. See, I, I understand that, and I can sympathize with that thought. But I always have to say and bring it back to one thing. This is just my truth. It's my case. It's my story. It's what happened to me. It happened so quick that I didn't really know what completely I was looking at, except I saw this little creature pulling her jaw apart with her sinew and her blood and her tissue being ripped apart. What about your, your friends? Uh, you've talked about a lot of friends that went missing. One of the, your friends uh, at the university was murdered in his office. There are people actively, and I can't give you an alphabet name of the group, basically threatening people's lives. Do you think this was our government? There is a dark side, you know, of military type people beating people up killing them or threatening their lives to make them silent I have yet to see independent study of the video of the photographs nobody's been able to verify your credentials if we kill the messenger off no I've given you all this time to talk okay but just let me hear me out and hear what I have to say okay. there are so many things about this that just don't add up everybody has their own opinion that's okay 
and I continue to say that all the way along. You know, I don't expect people to believe it. I wouldn't believe it either if it didn't happen to me. As you can see, the test ultimately showed that Reed was being extremely deceptive about the incident. While this doesn't entirely prove it to be a hoax, much of the evidence points to fraud, and the alien research community has accepted the Reed video as a fake. The questions come to not only the validity of the story itself, but Reed himself. Reed claims to be a professor at a university, but will not disclose the name of the place that he teaches, and shows no record of graduating with a degree. On top of that, the name Jonathan Reed is not even the man's real name. I mean, people who write books change their name all the time. What's the big deal? You know, you ask anybody who's had any trauma like this, they've done the same thing. And I'd do it again. But I'd do it different this time. Despite this, some people believe that Reed's account is true. On a Google forum from 2009, a user reportedly sat in on a talk that Reed conducted following the incident. The user reports that some members of Congress even attended the talk. During this, according to the user, Reed made mention of the following. Reed has been on the run ever since the incident. Wiping his eye, he admits that he has been beaten up by agents three times, and two of his close friends have even been killed. He goes as far as saying that his life has been ruined, and that he has lost nearly all of the things that he enjoyed before the encounter, such as a steady job, home, and a girlfriend. Recently, he was shot in the shoulder after trying to wrestle a gun from a stranger approaching him in a parking lot. With an equally emotional wraith, the controversial contactee recently co-authored a book called The Link, which contends that mysterious agents are chasing Reed for a technology that the alien wore on its wrist. Something like a transmitter receiver, this hieroglyphic link bracelet turned from silver to black when Reed clasped it on the alien's arm. It is believed that the wristband served as a tracking device that maintained a connection with the alien's nine-foot-long granite-like craft. Ever since finding the device, Reed believes that he is being pursued by government powers. I did my best to search and find out what Reed is up to now, but all traces of him seem to run cold. Some forum users believe that he is being exploited by the government to predict future events, as Reed supposedly predicted an earthquake that hit Japan in 2011. Regardless of whether or not his story is true, Reed's story is certainly captivating. Perhaps a warning that just beyond our stars lies something sinister. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.